Hey guys! So today we are going to move on uh, a bit from the 3D printer project. I already ordered the controller and the electronics that we are going to need to renew the electrical panel. So today, while we wait for the parts to arrive, we are going to be working on the 4262A HP LCR meter. So this uh, LCR meter I got on an auction last month and I already tested it, it's working, but it's a very old equipment that needs a full recap. So for, to order the, the capacitors, uh, I'm gonna need to disassemble it and to count the, the number of components. So I decided to do this first video with you guys where we go to the bench and I show the individual boards and after that I'm gonna be counting the components. So decide for to do this introductory video. Okay, so let's go to the bench now and let's look at the, the individual boards. Okay guys, so here we have the instrument. I already unscrew the case, so I'm gonna be removing here and let's see what's inside. Oops, it's the wrong side. <laughs> So this is the wrong side, so I'm gonna be doing the opposite. So here you can see that it looks nice, actually. Uh, the board looks pristine, it's a good sign. So let's turn this instrument on the other side and let's unscrew here. Okay, so, so here we have it, all the different boards for the instrument. So let's start removing them and having a look on the board conditions. Let's start with this device very carefully because these levers uh, are very dry at this moment. You can see that there is a lever broken here already. So here we can see the first board. So this is a power supply board for sure, or part of a power supply. We can see because this big capacitor here as well. And I also can see here that we have VREF and we have the different voltage rays here 5 volts, minus 12, plus 12, a setup, plus 12 regulator, int B, I'm not sure what is this, but yeah, the, the board looks pristine. Uh, also, the, the gold fingers here looks good as well. So here we already see that we have a lot of capacitors to replace. Uh, so all of these electrolytes must go by the age. So let's check the second board. So this one that has a broken lever. This is gonna be a little bit trickier to remove, I guess. It's not easy. Let's try with a plier. the lever is really hard and was very sticky. Okay, here we have a second board. Uh, HP doesn't have me... don't give me a hint about what this board does, but here we can see that we have more four electrolyte, electrolyte cap, uh, capacitors. <laughs> hard word. Yeah, so more for capacitors to be replaced, and they sure will. Let's check the next one. Okay, so next board looks pristine as well. I'm very happy with the condition of these boards, like the solder is very shiny, uh, everything look, looks new. Uh, and here we have more six capacitors to, to be replaced. The ceramic doesn't need to be replaced, 
this uh, polyester or PP capacitors don't need as well. So next one. It's nice the attention to detail. So the levers have different color combinations. So it's very easy if you remove all the boards to, to check. So this next board, yeah, looks good as well. All of the boards looks very good. This instrument was very well carried during its life. So here we have one, two, three, four, uh, six, seven, eight. This purplish capacitors and one more here that is an axial ones. So these axial ones are very expensive nowadays because it's hard to find them to buy. And usually it's just the audio people that, that are buying these capacitors. But I like to keep the same formats and very perfectionist. So if I install a new radio capacitors, I don't, I'm not gonna feel good. <laughs> so yeah, I'm probably gonna replace it with the same one. Wow, look at this capacitor's size. This is gonna be expensive. <laughs> Especially if the, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to find the, the same uh, axial capacitor for this one. But yes, more purple ones here. More, more six purple ones. So all of them must go. Very easy job. Very easy recap job here. Uh, so I think we end up the analog section. I think this section is all analog. So let's go digital. Yeah, I can see that these boards don't have gold fingers anymore. So they went cheaper. Yeah, so basically, I think these small ones are capacitors. Yeah, I think it is very tiny. Axial ones are electrolyte. I'm not sure I'm gonna need to check on the, the data sheet, the CRC manual for, for this equipment. If I can identify that those are electrolyte because they are a little bit different, but I believe, yeah, one, dot zero K, I, I imagine that is micro, one micro 35 volts. Yeah, looks electrolytic, very tiny ones. Next one, very, very hard these levers and very careful to not grow. Okay, so here we have a very big S um, crystal, I imagine it by its size, that this is the main sister, uh, system capacitor. And yeah, we basically don't have much uh, electrolytic here at all. We have this nice mica capacitors here. So I imagine they, they want to have more stability here in the capacitance, especially if it's the oscillator. So yeah, they didn't install any electrolytic here. Or maybe this, oh, sorry. There are three, actually, I see. These tiny ones that I imagine is one micro farad. So yeah, let's see if I can find tiny axial capacitors like this. It would be a real shame if I need to install radio ones. So, almost gone. And here they have this. Oh, it's, it's a deep socket connector. Okay, so this is the main processor board. I know because this I see, I have another HP instrument that has the same processor. And it's interesting because you can see here, minus five volts. This I see they, they had to be factory calibrated with some kind of voltage to, for, to them to operate. I'm not sure why. I saw this uh, this reference in another video, but the guy wasn't explaining. And yeah, both both of mine uh, they operate at five volts, but uh, this this voltage varies and this factor calibrated, and you can see that's handwritten here. 
So very, very interesting. And here you, we can see more uh, three or five electrolytic capacitors. So they must go as well. I don't want to take any chance to keep a load capacitor that can damage this instrument because yeah, this instrument was a very good deal purchase for me. I'm very happy with, with the, this instrument state as well. And the last board, last board, we see only two, two capacitors, okay? So it's, it's gonna be a quick, uh, a, a quick recap job because the boards are very easy and very spacey to, uh, to work with. So yeah, with my new desoldering station, this is gonna be quick and easy. So guys, I hope that you enjoyed this. So this was more like a quick look up into the individual boards. Now I'm gonna get a, a notepad and, and I'm gonna write down all the capacitor values and then we're gonna be replacing. So wait for the next video where we're gonna be replacing all the capacitors for, for all the boards and have this instrument working shiny as brand new, okay? So see you in the next video. Bye-bye.